All right, it is Wednesday, my fault, Jay, and I need a cocktail, too. That's what happens on hump day. We'll tell you where we're at in a minute, but Kayla's here. Hi, Kayla. Hello. Putting together a cocktail for us. What are you making? I'm making our signature violet sour. Fantastic. And this is um, Golden Moon Speak, and we're with Stephen Gould here as well. Hey, everybody. How are you? And Welcome to my... Welcome to Karen's and I's Insanity, Golden Moon Speakies. It's gorgeous. Seven years old as of last Thursday. We uh, thought we'd come into Golden. We brought our friend. Here's James Doxon, chef here with us as well from Vibe <laughs> Concepts. Thanks for coming along. You love this place yourself, Hey, hey, hey. James. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. I used to live here in Golden, and we were frequent uh, patrons of the, of the bar. Tell us about this cocktail, Stephen. So this cocktail was made with our creme de viol uh, liqueur. So it's 30% alcohol by volume. It's all natural, made from the blue violet flower. Um, this is essentially the same as we would do a whiskey sour, except instead of whiskey, we're using the vial liqueur. It ends up being a very light, refreshing, lower alcohol cocktail that people love. It is gorgeous. Kayla, great job, and what a perfect pour. <laughs> I love that. We've done this once in a while, I can tell. A few times. I know, we just jumped in here, and so caught a little off guard and you just perfectly responded but this is what you do you love cocktailing right i do i got my start here at golden moon speakeasy so uh it's got a special place in my heart fantastic little drops of some essence what yep that's going to be pesha bitters classic we use a little um rose water that we've added a little bit of activated charcoal to for another color love it what a gorgeous drink and what's yeah. kind of your theme or ethos here at the Speak? You know, every bit of alcohol, because we're legally a manufacturer's sales room. So every bit of alcohol that we sell in our cocktail program here, we make. Yes. So this is really about craft from start to finish. You know, our cocktails are unique. They're flavorful. They're fun. They're, it's a world-class cocktail program. In fact, not to brag, but Gin Magazine named us cocktail bar of the year which is a global award last week so we're really running a world craft program here but it's all about going from the raw ingredients all the way to amazing cocktails like i said every drop of alcohol we sell here we make here again gorgeous cocktail kayla you have to hold that because i don't know whether you plan this but you're matching that cocktail today. oh wow yeah let me That's just get true. a photo <laughs> of you yeah Fantastic. I love that. That's one of the things that I always tell everybody when, when I come over or talk to people about it is, is everything here is made in-house. Everything that just blows my mind. It's, it's so awesome that, you know, you have the ability to make that variety of product that you can serve this uh, amazing of a cocktail menu um, with, you know, such a diverse pro. Uh, portfolio of we, we believe the Golden Moon Distillery, uh, we've got one of the largest, I think one of the two largest pr pr uh, spirits lines in the state, the other being Leopold Brothers. Um, you know, we make well over 20 regular products. And Which we blows my mind, Stephen. I mean, it's basically a turnkey cocktail program. Yeah. And we've very deliberately gone down the rabbit hole of being able to run, you know, what is, I, I'm proud to say, is an amazing world-class cocktail program and make every single component ourselves, every single input ourselves, you know, and that includes, we do, we do in-house bitters, we do buy some bitters, obviously we use Peychaud's, uh, but we make our own bitters as well, we make tinctures, we make, make shrubs, you know, this is all about what we can do. We find the best ingredients around the world and we make amazing things. Pour that bar, Jay, while we sit here and talk just a second here. And Kayla, standing by, are you ready for your next creation? Start lining Absolutely. up your next. Or you're just locked and loaded and ready to yeah, go. Yeah, I'm ready. I, I'm ashamed of myself. And you know why? Because I haven't been here yet. How do I call myself the Colorado food and beverage guy? Haven't been to Golden Moon Speak. I toured the distillery today. You'll see that coming up here in a future segment. But this is the creme de la creme when you go in for any kind of cocktailing program. We well, you know it. a lot of people in Denver think Golden's a really long, long ways away. It's really 20 minutes. But some people will just, they don't make it out here. And yet, you know, even you know, in 2015, which is six years ago now, Westward named us the top classic cocktail bar in Denver. And we're, we're 20 minutes away in Golden. But we do have a very strong following. Um, like I said, we've been around seven years now. Continue to get accolades, continue to be busy. Uh, we've weathered the storm of the last year, which has been COVID. 
Um, and we're still here and the staff's still doing what they do best. And people are still coming here and having a wonderful time and enjoying what we do. Cool, cool. Okay, Kayla, take it away. What are you ready getting for ready the next for one? now? Yeah, yeah. Of this course. is going to be another one we do uh, called the Phoenix Down. It's essentially an old fashioned um, with whiskey and our Muscovado syrup, a couple dashes of Angostura, a couple dashes of our spicy bitters that we make, and a little dash of cinnamon as well. So, very aromatic. Um, with the cinnamon, a little bit of heat with the spicy. You know, you're going to ruin me up. for others. And you're then we're going to smoke it. Absolutely ruin me. This is, this is my jam right here. This is an amazing cocktail. It's one of my favorite cocktails on our menu. Um, we've had it on our menu for a couple of years now, and it's probably going to stay on our menu for a very long time. It's a very cool flavor profile. It's an amazing presentation. People love it. You can also, and we'll show this in the next segment, you can get some food here as well. The charcuterie board just sounds amazing to me. And, and for a place like this with delicious cocktails, to have that available. But, cool. you know, pre-COVID, you know, we do have a small kitchen in-house. Yep. Pre-COVID, we ran our own food program. Uh, we looked at what we were doing and what our neighbors literally across the hall there were doing and just decided to combine food programs in, the, in their kitchen. I have to interrupt. Back to Kayla. What? Talk we are to me. taking um, this smoking gun here and smoking right in this potion bottle so that we get a little hint of smoke. I've on. seen this done so many ways and never that cool. Yeah, that okay. was amazing. Now, I've Do seen a... boxes and chambers and, and put the gla turn the glass over. This is rock and roll rad. So with you're actually smoke. mixing the smoke in with the spirits itself. Not only that, because it's cold, when she pours it, the smoke is heavier in air, than air, and the smoke's actually gonna pour out of the apothecary bottle. I am so mad at you guys. So you serve it like that, huh? Why don't you taste that? I have to. I have to. Unbelievable. You mind? Thanks, Kayla. Not at all. Shit. Sorry, my nerves. No, you're fine, and you're doing a great job. I mean, literally some of the best cocktails I've seen a long time. I've seen a lot of cocktails, too. It's much Cheers better to this guys. than me, and you've seen me make cocktails. <laughs> Telling you, right? Yeah. Dan but dangerous. I mean, literally. Greg, get out. Go home, Greg. Get in your Uber and go. <laughs> Delicious. Hats off. Cheers. Cheers. Fantastic. That's great. And do you get the... Little container is. Do you slide this over with that? And you oh yeah, container and we, in serve, that? we serve it in the apothecary bottle, with the with the small glass, and that way it stays cold. The smoke stays in there, and then you drink it. And, you, and each each bit of serving is cold ongoing. I love that. I'll tell you what. So part of me is getting to be an old guy, right? Starting to get into the experience is everything. So far, the experience is just rad, and that's what you love. That right? Yeah. What's next? Let's make a uh, golden mamba. That's oh, oh, I'm sorry? We call it the golden mamba. Okay, why not? Why, why do you not? call it the golden mamba, Stephen? Oh, we'll give Kayla. I'm going to let Kayla Go do ahead, this one. Kayla. Um, it is our, we call it our 11 whiskey because this one goes to 11. We take our rye whiskey and infuse two jalapeno peppers and one habanero. Wow. We use an ounce of that infusion. It infuses for 24 hours. A little bit of our dry curacao. And then a uh, house-made uh, uh, cucumber syrup that's bright green and nice fresh lime juice. So this one resembles almost like a spark spicy margarita with the curacao, lime, cucumber. You'd never know it was whiskey, which is the comment I get the most on it, but it's super refreshing. Before nice you do that, spicy. can I pause you for yes, a half a second? Course. I know James, he's getting jealous here. Can you get me a, one of these glasses <laughs> so I can pour <laughs> that in here? Sure. Yeah. I can hear him ooh yeah. and ah. Yeah, over here. Like, I'm reading your I'm mind. Over like, here. Mm. Let's do yep. it. I'm get in there. <laughs> I'm looking out for you. Yes. You know, I'm going to say I really appreciate you being here. Uh, and I know you're the real reason, the only real reason you're here <laughs> is because you used to hang out here and you're here for, for the free drink. It's That's true. Right. That's it's right. That's right. Well, we, we want to survive concepts. We want to support local, you know. We got, you I know, appreciate eight, that. eight restaurants and we, we try and support each other, right? You know, Amen. We, Absolutely. Yeah. We go through Colorado Colorado restaurants all the, all around, you know. Give me a new one and on with that. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. Yes. 
Oh, that is that right. is an R. Ah. That's Ooh. a new R. Oh my I goodness! I thought you'd had that one before. No, I haven't. This, uh, yeah, and I love the presentation. I haven't actually seen that one. God, that is really good. Now, Kayla, I, do you just strive on perfection because everything you've done so far is perfect? The oh. pours are perfect, execution's perfect, the setup. It, this is just, this is what you want. This can I can I ask this? Can I? It, is the, the green color from the cucumber syrup, is that natural? Is, yes, is, absolutely. How, how so do we, we get that from the skins? Yep, we juice them with a vegetable juicer um, and yes. then it's just good. emulsify sugar into that um, with a hand blender so that yep. there's no heat introduced. So we keep that nice, bright, vibrant green color. Yeah, and then strain it. Yep, right. exactly. Yeah. Who's jealous on a Wednesday? I know you are. Yeah, that uh, one's refreshing. For a cold and moon speak. As the weather changes, do you have a, a cocktail that the weather's going to get a little wonky here over the weekend. I so need we do hot toddies. We do the Grola. We do a few other things. Pick a hot cocktail. Sounds good. Okay. We're going to off. Do we'll we have hot back. water ready? We, we're going in break. So we okay, can cool. get hot water ready. But also these refreshing spring cocktails as well. This is delicious. This is a treat right here at Golden Moon Speak. We're with the distiller himself, Stephen Gould. I brought my chef along. I don't know if you can really see me through the plexiglass, but oh, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You can. Um, we're going to break away. We'll come right back. We've got more cocktails to make for you on this Wednesday. It's a hump day. It's the 10th of March. Can you believe it? March is just flying by. We're going to get into spring. The, the hours of operations are going to be fantastic. We'll show you around a little bit here. And then the patio is really cool itself. What a community you have here in Golden, Colorado. We absolutely do. We got a bunch of great bars and restaurants and cool little shops out here in Golden. We're really a pretty tight knit community. And you know, like I said, we're 20, 25 minutes from Denver. So please come down, visit Golden. Golden is open for business, folks. Just Back saying. in the flash, the Modern Eater Show will continue. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumplin', 4 by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey 4-pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12 percent. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey 4 pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pencos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian style badassery today. Watching the Modern Eater, and now back to the show. Something they drink in the Dolomites in Northern Italy. At Golden Moon Speak, right here in Golden, Colorado. I'm telling you that on a Wednesday, these cocktails are delicious. We'll just jump back in to the bar here momentarily, but I have to tell you about Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, what does he do? He's the man with the plan when it comes to tap systems and tap installs, whether it's maintenance or giving you the tap system of your dreams. Jeff Rourke is going to make sure that beer tastes just like the brewer intended it to taste. Jay, you're ready right now. You knew I was going to ask it. Jay? I got a question for you. Shoot. You ready? If you're pouring inefficient beer, what are you doing, Jeff? You're pouring your money down the drain. And why don't you want to pour your money down the drain? You shouldn't. Yeah, you Foam should. is money. Foam Jack, is money. Foam, foam is money. And Jeff's going to make sure that you save that money to spend on other things that you need. Give him a call. He's a very friendly guy. He's a family man, 20 years in the business, family owned and operated. 720-272-3809. 
720-272-3809. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Let's get back to the show here at Golden Moon Speak. Stephen Gould here with us. It's so great to have you with us and James Doxson. Guys, let's do the play-by-play. What's Kayla up to right now? So Kayla's going to come back over here in a sec, and she's going to be making a hot cocktail called the Grola. Some of you may remember a few months ago I did, I did a Grola on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made a total mess out of it. Uh, but so the Grola is an Italian cocktail that comes from the Dolomites uh, and the Italian Alps. The term Grola means friendship cup, and they traditionally drink it out of a wooden cup that you pass around with spouts on it. But we're in COVID, so we're not going to do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to make uh, a cocktail that has our genape. And in Italy, it's either going to be a genape or, or a grappa or both. Here we use our genape. We use a good quality chocolate. We use coffee. We mix it together. We give it a good stir. Uh, typically, you'll add a little citrus. And here, Kayla's going to kind of kick it up with a little bit of, of whipped cream and a little bit of mint. Mother of goodness. That is off to a good start right there, James. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Nothing better. What's so interesting, and, and I love having you here with us here today, the jump across from cocktailing and the tastes, and, and your palate's very advanced, Stephen, and, and you jump over to Chef here. How similar is it being in the kitchen to being behind the bar? Goodness, I just made the comment the other day, actually, uh, to one of our chefs. You know, it's, it's so similar that behind a bar and a kitchen line, you know, the, the stations, you know, you have your mise en place, your, your prep already in front of you for efficiency so you can kind of grab things you know and jive around um the and you're right greg the flavor profiles alone are just amazing you know you get into the blackberry sage drinks and you know these mixing fruits and herbs and different liqueurs and the you know star anise flavors and you know all well you know i started in kitchens so before i was a brewer before i was a distiller i started working in kitchens and i am a trained saucier Ah, and a lot of what w- the what has developed my palate, and I mean, you know, I judge spirits all over the world. I've done gin formulas, 20, 30 formulas for commercial products already. I've done over a dozen commercial absinthe formulas for people. I do whiskeys all the time for people. I developed that palate on the, on the culinary side of things. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the skills in blending flavors that I learned as a saucier and layering flavors go right into, into a lot of the products that we here at Goldman make. But can you cook? I think I can cook. Can I, I cook? think you can, too. Think it's you all about balance. Right? It's all about balance. It's, it's all, all about, about fi- you know, yeah. I mean, Interesting men in the world. Okay. Um, this cocktail, right? That is beautiful. I know. And that's what you want on a inclement weather day. So this weekend when we're getting pounded by snow, yeah. you all can come down here. Yeah. Come in here. It'll be warm. Have a nice, a nice grola. Have a nice uh, hot toddy. Yeah. Sit back, relax. We'll have some live music. Get a little food. Live music's a big part of this venue. So not as big as it was pre-COVID yeah. because we don't have the room. Sure. But we tend to do one to three nights a week with either single or two artist groups that are very isolated, yeah. so we can get people in here. You know, it's a small venue. And as such, even at right now we're at 50% capacity, mm-hmm. we really can't get there. We can get to about 37% capacity, and every seat is filled. But more often than not, at least Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, every seat in this place is filled. So do you need to call ahead? You do not need you to call ahead. You don't just, if you got it, you'll get in. We will. That's the speak. We do, right. We don't take reservations. Um, we haven't had to do a whole lot of turning people away. We have on occasionally on the last couple of Saturdays, like we'll get a in. pop and people will say, come back in 30 minutes. Well, listen, maybe that storm will be what they say it's going to be because in Florida, Stephen, if a hurricane comes through, you go to your favorite watering hole and they board it up and you're in there until it goes. So hopefully <laughs> if you get in here before that storm and you can't get out. Maybe you'll, you know, spend the night here or something. I don't know. Just playing. <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> come on back over here. Do you have any more cocktails in you? Oh, man. So many. What do you, which one do you want to do now? Uh, should we do one more? Yeah, yeah, let's do a Brooklyn. Okay. Let's do a Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Describe the Brooklyn. Brooklyn is also going to be a whiskey base here. A uh, classic cocktail. So we start with rye whiskey. We've got a little bit of our um, dry curacao, 
for the sweetness. And the Amer de Pecan, this is our bitter orange liqueur. Um, it's wonderful in whiskey cocktails and makes a lot of classics that have not really been resurrected since post-prohibition. So we like being able to bring this one back. It's a classic. You know, Amer Picon is this weird old spirit that was developed in 1839 by an apothecary working for the French army in North Africa called Gaetien Picon. And he developed it because he contracted malaria and he wanted to use it to treat his own malaria. And it actually, in many ways, became the first functional anti-malarial drug because it did work. It worked so well, the French army funded him to build his first distillery in Phillipsville, which is a small city in North Africa that's now called Siana, it's in Algeria. And so Amer Picon came on the market. Uh, in the late 1800s, they moved production to France. And if you look at pre-prohibition cocktail books, Amer Picon is all over those cocktail books as an ingredient. Well, there is a modern Amer Picon, but it's not anywhere near what the f historical formula was. I collect rare books on distillation and distiller's notes and et cetera, and just dumb luck came across notes from the original distillery with the, the, the manufacturing procedures in it. And so we were able with a little bit of R&D for a couple of years to recreate the original formula and the original production methods. It's the only formula that's not a golden moon formula we make. And we're really proud of it. It's a wonderful ingredient. And I use it in cocktails all the time. The cocktail she's making is one of my favorite all-time cocktails. And, you know, if you like a really classic rye whiskey drink with a lot of bitter and complexity, a Brooklyn's the cocktail for you. It's little brother, the liberal is also a great cocktail. It's a little simpler, but I drink one of the two. What's of the, the little brother? The liberal. Okay, the liberal. So the liberal is the same cocktail except for no maraschino. Gotcha. So traditionally a Brooklyn is going to have rye whiskey, vermouth, pecan, and maraschino, and a liberal is the same cocktail without the maraschino. What an awesome story. I mean, you could have made all that up. It just sounded so good. I would, <laughs> I'm so not going to fact check if it. You, if you go out and look for historical cocktail books, there's a book called Jack's Manual. Jack's Manual? Jack's Manual from 1904, I think. Jack was a bartender in New York. And that's the first written documentation of the Brooklyn cocktail. Wow. Everybody says, you know, there were five, five borough cocktails. Each borough in New York had a cocktail. And there's a saying among, among uh, bartenders that deal in vintage cocktails and craft cocktails that if Amer Picon had not disappeared from the U.S. market in the 1970s, we'd all be drinking Brooklyn's instead of Manhattan's. Interesting. Interesting. Speaking of interesting, wow. Stephen Gould, I love, first of all, every cocktail has a story, right? Absolutely. I mean, the lineage of cocktails is, I mean, that's what's really fascinating. You talk about like old school and, and, and beer back in the day and finding old yeast and, and wine as well. It's come a long way. That didn't, those, that type of stuff really didn't taste the greatest. <laughs> Some all. of it did. I mean, I argue with that. A lot of people will say old spirits and old beers and et cetera were horrible. Uh-huh. And then you have the other thing that says everything that's old is good. The reality is both are wrong. Subjective. Some things historically tasted amazing. I mean, I've got absinthe samples. I've got pecan samples from the 1800s that are really amazing. But I've opened some vintage st stuff that's really horrible. Mm -hmm. But then again, there's some stuff that's made today that's amazing and some stuff that's not so good. Yeah. So, you know, it's a combination of what works and what doesn't. And a lot of things that made really amazing beverages and foods historically that we got away from in the mid to late 20th century are now being rediscovered by cooks, by bartenders, yeah. by food producers. Mm -hmm. And we're sort of right now in this country and here in Colorado in a food and beverage renaissance where people are really kind of pushing the edge of the envelope. They're going back into the in, into into historical books, doing the research. They're going out there, do experimenting with new things as well. Mm -hmm. And there's just an explosion of flavor that's occurring and a sp an explosion of different types and techniques of food and beverage production. It's a really cool time to eat and drink. Wow, I know. Uh, Jack might have been really cool back in the early 1900s. But I'll put Kayla next to Jack. Any Kayla's time. pretty much a rock star. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I know we biased. need a book, the Kayla. <laughs> I know I, I may be biased. She's my, you know, she's my longtime employee and uh, bar manager and lead bartender, and but she's kind of a rock star. All right, what, just saying. What needs to happen? I think a charcuterie board. 
made its way. Charcuterie board is We're going to break away real quick. And what do you have to do when these delicious cocktails are made? I think I need to drink that Brooklyn table. right now. We're going to sit around a table. But what I want you to do is find something that's a really interesting story in this bar, whether it's a spirit or something else. Pull it off. Let's sit down. Let's have story time with Stephen Gould here in just a minute. We'll sit down, have these cocktails, tell a story, and then we'll um, send it over to the distillery. We're going to teleport Perfect. over there and show you the distillery. This is a great afternoon. It's a Wednesday. It's a hump day. The Modern Eater Show is thrilled to be at Golden Moon Speak, catching up with Stephen and Kayla. Our chef James is here with us. Greg Hollenbeck and Jay Parker will sit down. We'll take a load off. We'll have a couple cocktails and tell a story. What do you think? Perfect. That's what's coming up next on the Modern Eater Show. All right, so guys. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms. And I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching the Modern Eater Show. Hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world. And then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with The Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. Okay, welcome back to Golden Moon Speak, and this is a real luxury right next door, and this is what Neighborly is all about and local. This is a delicious charcuterie board from our friends over there at Miner Saloon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This comes over, and you can order this as well for yourself. We'll get back to the show in just a minute. I wanted James to be here with me, Chef James Doxon from Vibe Concepts. I'm telling you, things are starting to open back up. Folks are ready to get back to work. The kitchens are getting full again, but you got to get ready. If you're looking to just sharpen up your skills or you're looking to get into the industry itself, which is a pleasure, right? Yeah, Come absolutely. Come join us in hospitality. Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. There's a tab. It's a free program. You've gone to one of these classes yourself at Studio Kitchen Colorado. It's a pretty good baseline program, Chef. Absolutely. It'll give you any, any of the base knowledge that you need to start in a restaurant. You know, uh, as a hiring chef, you know, I'm, I'm looking to see base knife skills, you know, can you make a sauce? Do you know how to hold a knife, a saucepan, 
uh, you know, the basics of, of any restaurant or kitchen, and they teach those skills. They teach them, and they teach them in a very short time, and it's free, and it's, you know, a, a just an awesome uh, adventure to be able to push yourself into a, a career like that. Career so yeah. Not only do they train you to have that baseline knowledge to where a chef will go, okay, listen, I like that, come on in, but they also have hiring fairs too, so they want you to be employed. Again, it's a gimme. It's free to you. You also come out of it with a serve safe certificate. These are all things that you would want. It's Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. If you go to themoderneater.com, the tab across the top, it has Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start, and you just hit the drop down, you'll see here's how you sign up. Please do that today and come join us in hospitality. These charcuterie boards, let's go over. We're going to sit there and talk with Stephen, enjoy these cocktails, and it is story time at Golden Moon Speak. Thank you, Stephen. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Um, I forgot my mic was on, so I apologize for the background noise. No worries. I think Jay had you covered. Since we're, uh, since we're at the table, we can take our masks off and enjoy a little bit. You know, um, it's, it's COVID time. Got to live by the rules, right? Absolutely. So we're going to have a little food. Uh, we share our food program with Miner's Saloon next door. You just talked about the charcuterie board. We've got a nice sausage board, all different wild game sausages. Uh, really cool little food program. And then we've got the cocktails we just made. And then we're going to talk a little bit because he wanted a story. I do want so a story. We're going to give Greg what he wants. Hang on, hang on for the story. Um, let's just, do, sh since we have Chef here with us, at first blush, what are we looking at here? Oh, I love it. So I love the lavash on top. Uh, nice little flatbread there, cracker to put some stuff on. Obviously, it looks like we got some nice burrata, very creamy in the center, a little gorgonzola or Stilton um, or Roquefort cheese here. Uh, looks like a mimolette or uh, some sort of uh, hard ripened um, cheddar aged. A bresso bresola, uh, possibly, maybe a calabrese salami, Genoa salami. That's going to have your standard garlic, peppercorn, you know, fennel kind of things. Looks like some different jams, possibly a fig and some mustarda or something. All that pickled. And, and all of this pickle. That's my favorite. Me that's too. my interest uh, those right here. pickles are made here. So yeah, they, uh, I think they, they make, make them, them all in house. Yeah, and I've been over there uh, plenty of times. Pickled strawberries make it more unique. But why just better. looking at that, my mouth starts watering. Just I like if your, mi your mind knows. Yeah, what it's about I think it does in. because uh, acid makes your, makes your mouth yeah. water. So Pick that up yeah. there. Let's see what's we got. And what, what did we you call that, here. Chef? Lavash, yeah, which is a type of flatbread, you know. Okay, uh, lavash. Uh, yeah, lavash, yeah. Uh, looks like some different sausages. I have no idea what they have here in store. I don't know if you know. I, you know. I should. They rotate them, um, yeah. but I think there's some. I think I think there's some bison, bison elk. Yeah, elk. Um, I don't know what the other two are. No, I'm probably <laughs> wild boar or something. Yeah, yeah look wild at the boar mustard. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is what you can just conquer. You take the lavash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you start assembling. You love that word. However yeah. you yeah. want to. I, I, I absolutely do. But yeah. this is where you just start to put things together. And this is where you start drinking your cocktails. Well, and, you know, I said, you know, before COVID, you know, we have a little kitchen back there. We had our own kitchen program. Our neighbor had a kitchen program. We put our heads together when we, had, you know, when COVID hit and really decided that we should, you know, use their kitchen, their kitchen staff and share a food program. And so literally now you can, you order food, you pay for it here. It's made next door, which is right across the hall. Yeah. And they walk it over. It works beautifully. Both be businesses benefit from sharing it. And, you know, it's more flow through through his kitchen. I don't have to keep staff in the back because our, our food program is a very small piece of what we do. It's a much larger piece of what they do next door. So it's really a beautiful partnership relationship between Golden Moon and Miner Saloon. That's what you call local. Love it. Yeah. Local, local, local. Working together. Yeah. Okay. okay. I got to do this Chef. in front of the camera. Oh, I got to get that. Get break, it. Break oh, it up and I just crumble it up. Talk all about up. breaking the bread. Yeah. Okay, chef, pick a cocktail. Any cocktail? This one's mine. That one's. Yeah. I'm being uh, greedy. No yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm eyeing that the violet. Uh, you and know. And the Phoenix Down is up there as well. So yes. I want some more of that. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. This is my. I love any sour. Any I sour. Do too. Pisco sour. Whiskey sour. Um, yeah, gin fizz. Anything well, with egg white, honestly. The pisco yeah. sour. The 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 whiskey sour. The violet sour. Those are all really all variations on the same theme. They're typically the same process. You're just changing base spirit. Cheers, mm -hmm. gentlemen. Yeah, so. cheers. Okay. And this is where it gets good on a Wednesday, right? Time to you open up. What are your hours of operation? So we're currently 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tuesday uh, through Friday. No, it's Tuesday through Thursday. 2 to 12 on Friday. 
noon to 12, so 12 hours on Saturday, and 2 to 10 on Sunday. Wow. The heat off of that cocktail is perfect. Is it? Oh, my God. I'm glad you had that one because I, I have never been a huge fan of uh, spicy cocktails, just a personal preference. It's so much. But my daughter loves that. But I, when I it's don't balanced, I, yeah. I'm not, a, I taste it. I'm good at tasting and knowing it tastes good. Right. It's not what I like. My daughter drinks those like they're going out of style. Her, exactly, her, yeah. her and her boyfriend, mm -hmm. you know, they're both 30-somethings, and they just, they, they love absolutely them. love it. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. their thing. Yeah, it reminds me of a cucumber martini, but with a little bit of Oh, my up God, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so the, the number yeah. 11, which she mentioned before, is our rye whiskey that we infuse uh, with jalapeno and habanero. And number 11 is, is, you know, the volume dial on, on, on an amplifier goes to 10. This goes one notch higher. It's number 11. So maximum okay. volume, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the nickname of the whiskey comes from. It's not a product we sell. It's a product we make in-house here for cocktails. Mm -hmm. So we take our normal port finish rye and just take it up a notch, if Get you it. will. Start, yeah. So People are really tuning kind of in cool. to watch you eat. It's all good. It's good. all good. Yeah, start loading up the plate. Okay, I thought you'd put a sweater on. I really did. It's, it's story time. It's story With time. With Stephen Gould. First of all, right. you have props, too, for I the have story. Props. All right. I love so it. So this product is Ex Gratia. So Ex Gratia is a genope. A genope is a liqueur made from lesser wormwoods. They make them throughout the mountainous regions of Europe. In France and Switzerland, they're commonly called genope. Uh, but they're, they exist elsewhere as well, the Pyrenees, all the way up uh, into the Nordic countries. Um, in Sweden, for example, they'll call them Bosque Brandvin. Um, you might be familiar with the term Malort. Mm -hmm. Malort is a genope as well. The Malort is technically a Bosque Brandvin. These are all made out of lesser wormwoods. So grand wormwood is Artemisia absinthium, and they make absinthe out of it. Lesser wormwoods, are what they make out of are all typically called either simple or modified genopes or complex genopes. So chartreuse is a complex genope, and ex gratia is a complex genope. Now this particular drink was inspired by the description of an elixir that I found in a hangman's notebook from Bavaria from the 1580s. This is, I don't even know what he's saying right now. Okay. <laughs> it's the best in the world though, right? <laughs> it's just this abstract <laughs> story. That no, 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 no. So he <laughs> talked about an elixir <laughs> that he made and so your, your executioners, your hangmen in Europe during the 16th century were as much healers as they were killers. And they actually often had better surgical and medical skills than trained doctors because for religious regions, the doctors couldn't touch a dead body, but the executioner could. And so the executioners had unlimited access to cadavers because they were killing people. So the poor, the people that couldn't afford to go to a doctor would go to the executioner for medical help. And they would make things, among other things, various elixirs that would be used for additional purposes. One of which were, was this type of an elixir, a genope. Now, the reason we call this ex gratia, ex gratia is Latin for an unremitting act of kindness. Now, the executioners, when they would execute somebody, they typically, unless they had done something really heinous like killing a child, they would give them a dose of one of their best elixirs to help ease them into the next life. A la an unremitting act of kindness, which is what we've named this product. So this is a very funky, herbal, herbaceous liqueur, sort of a distant cousin of what you might know if you drink chartreuse mm -hmm. or if you drink Dolan Genepe Alpine. Mm -hmm. They're both related spirits, but they're very different. So it's very herbaceous. It's very complex. It's 50 ABV. It packs a punch. Now, we just used it in the Grola cocktail. Um, I use it in place of a, char uh, of, of a chartreuse in a bijou cocktail as well. I use it in a bunch of other cocktails. And w a lot of people just like to sit and sip it neat like we're about to do. Cheers. 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 <laughs> wow, great story. Is that, more, is that what you had in mind for story time? And that was okay. Oh, gee. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was all right. I've oh, my goodness. The flavor on this is... It goes so many ways. It you does. Know, you get that peppermint kind of uh, sting. It's, it's the in my mind. Yeah. Herbaceous, really. And, right. and I don't want to go floral, but I'm getting a little floral with there. There's a little floral. I'm not going to lie. I was very scared when you mentioned Malort because <laughs> everybody it, who's been to Chicago 
um, or, or live Malort. there Jepsons has Malort. no knows Jepson's Malort, and it is awful. No, no, um, no. It's an acquired it's taste. Okay. I actually, I actually, <laughs> so I've been drinking. I've been making Genepes and absinthe for years. I'm, I love Malort. Yeah. But it's a love or hate kind of a thing. It is. Um, this is not like Malort. No, it's though, not. Though it has some shared ingredients. Right. Right. So. This is this is fantastic. Such complex, and I love that. Yeah. You know, I like to see that. Um, uh, <laughs> I hope you're getting that on camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope you're getting that on uh, camera. <laughs> yeah. But Jepson's Malort is, I feel like most people uh, try and shoot it as a joke. They don't drink it and eat. They don't sip on it. Like, uh, and, and it's, it is like that kind of. You um, know, one of the coolest cocktails I've ever had, and I wish to God I could remember the name of the bar. Mm -hmm. About eight years ago, uh, one of the Chicago bars came down for the, uh, the bare knuckle bar brawl at Tales of the Cocktail. And their entrance was, uh, their cocktail they served at their bar at the competition was a bottled six ounce Malort soda. And it wow. was one of the cool, you, they would open it in the bottle and just hand you the bottle. And it was one of the coolest cocktails I've ever had. It just was this incredible complex flavor. Mm -hmm. And I've actually made carbonated I sodas with this. I was just going to say but that I've never might be gotten fantastic. Quite, yeah. I've never gotten quite the same experience that this bar in Chicago did. And I wish I could remember their name, but it was a really funky wow. cocktail. So Impressive, yeah. Too much. <laughs> There's a lot going There's on, There's right? so much going My on. My brain's going with the stories. My mouth is going with the, the flavors. The cocktails are great. Yep, I'm not going to lie. Te you know, teeny little bust. One of the other things I like doing with this, yep. I have a cocktail that I developed called a nail in the coffin. And it's not called a nail in the coffin because of the whole executioner thing. Mm -hmm. It's called a nail in the coffin because it's the last drink of the night. You'll go sleep. Okay. So um, it's, it's uh, two parts rye whiskey. So Kayla? three ounces. <laughs> Na nail in the coffin, please. It's that time of night. <laughs> no, I don't think it's that kind of a night. No, no, no. So it's, it's uh, two parts rye whiskey, one part sweet vermouth or Torino-style vermouth, so a brown or a red vermouth. Mm -hmm. One part this, stirred, served up, and garnished. In the summertime, I grow a shiso plant at home. Of course mm. you do. And so I'll, I'll garnish it with fresh shiso. If we're here in the bar and we don't have fresh shiso on the bar, mm -hmm. I'll do a little basil and rosemary garnish. But it's a really, er the herbaceousness of, of the genepe plays off the rye whiskey incredibly well. It's a freaking awesome drink. So there's yeah. another, another thing you can experiment with at home. All right, you got a beautiful bar. You also have the distiller's basement. That's my home bar. Uh, that's your home bar. So everybody, I have, a dis I have a YouTube series called The Distiller's Basement. Go on YouTube, Distiller's Basement, and we do cocktail videos and other fun things. And the bar in the Distiller's Basement is literally my home bar. The back bar is larger than this bar. The front bar is about a foot shorter than the front bar here. But it's a lot of fun, and one of these days I'm going to get these guys to come over yeah, to my house, you better bet cook it. a little food, and make a whole bunch more cocktails. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> what an awful <laughs> night. Yeah. God, if you insist. <laughs> yeah, we'll playing with food, that. playing with. No, that'd be an absolute pleasure. What's your most po prized pr possession at that bar? Oh God, you know I've been collecting rare booze and rare and, and rare books on booze for a couple of decades and at this stills. point. And stills. And stills. <laughs> Yes. And a few other things, uh -huh. old motorcycles. You'll see these stills coming up um, in the next segment. And, you know, I've got some really cool old bottles that I've never opened. I wouldn't call them an overall prized possession. They're things I'm waiting for the right opportunity mm -hmm. to drink. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got some old bottles of booze I've opened that have inspired me. Um, I really have a soft spot in my heart. Uh, it kind of changed my life. Uh, for old, old 1940s, 50s, 60s vintage Spanish absinthe or absenta. Mm -hmm. um, I had left distilling and gone off to a different career. Mm -hmm. And by accident, uh, in a junk store, I discovered a full case of about mid-1950s absenta argenti, which is one of the old Spanish brands. And I tasted it, and it totally blew me away, got me fascinated with absinthe, and got, drug me back into distilling. And I would not be a, dis a professional distiller today even though I was distilling before, mm -hmm. were it not for that first bottle of Absenta Argenti. So on my back bar, there's three or four old bottles of uh, Absenta Argenti up in a corner mm -hmm. that occasionally I open up and have a drink If of. you're feeling frisky. It's if I'm yeah. feeling frisky. <laughs> You'll get into it. You know, it's I one of those instances uh, where you, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, drink a f I do drink absinthe not as much as I used to, yeah. and I've got a lot of absinthe on the bar, yeah. 
but yeah. I don't always drink that absinthe, but that absinthe has a special spot in my heart. Yeah, that's when you'll see the spirit of the gods. Yeah. Really. Um, okay, here though, Jay's showing your, your back bar right now, I think. What's your most prized possession at this back I in this bar here at the speak? Oh, God. Um, you know, we make all the spirits on that back bar, and we're really proud of all of them. Um, you know, we make them, we push them through, et cetera. I'm rather fond of my gold Japanese lucky cat. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> wa waving to us. Saying waving hello. cat, oh. you know. <laughs> I mean, every bit of this little speakeasy we've created from nothing. When we moved into this space, it literally had purple walls, mirrors everywhere. It was a defunct yoga studio that had been used t for a couple of years as the de facto office for the U.S. Pro Challenge. Mm -hmm. And we gutted it and designed it ourselves. We didn't have a design firm. We kind of, you know, we hired a local uh, builder to build. We scrounged and bought parts and bits and pieces. Um, the barnwood wall here before people were way into barnwood literally was a collapsed barn that was up the street. And we, and we went in and just, uh, our builder went in and said, hey, can I buy that lumber? It's gorgeous. It's and, you know, we piecemealed this together and you know, I think the most prized possession we have in this speakeasy is this speakeasy, because it's really us. It's not the little baby guitar behind you? So that's a ukulele, and that's Kayla. <laughs> <A little, laughs> that's that's can can you play that? You can. You, I mean, you have to, right? Do you, you won't? <laughs> Pl I mean, please? I'll beg you. That won't work. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's going for it. Oh, my God. How great oh. would that be? Baby guitar. <laughs> that would be fantastic. We're going to teleport over to the distillery now. All right. We Next can do that. Next segment. It's a little bit. It's What is it? Ten minutes away? Ten minutes away. It's about three miles from here. Yeah. Um, it's just off of Colfax, a couple blocks down from Home Depot. So near the intersections of Colfax and Six. It's on Violet Street. Yeah. If people know where Grateful Bread's Bakery is, uh -huh. we're yes. directly across the street from Jeff's Bakery. So, you know, if you've been to Grateful Bread, we're right across the street. Um, it's just sort of tucked in uh, on off of Colfax on Violet, literally underneath the uh, I-470 off-ramp yeah. mm -hmm. where it comes on to 6th. Just before Dirty Dogs. Just before Dirty Dogs, exactly, in Wrigley's. You can't yeah. forget Wrigley's. Yeah. Um, two of our neighbors that own, you know, kind of kind of funky biker bar hangouts. Um, mm -hmm. Both of them have good bar food. And, uh, yeah, come on over, come for a tour, and we're going to see you there in a few minutes. Yeah, we de definitely are. Uh, it's a really cool segment. That's coming up next. While we're here at the Speak, I have to thank Kayla. She did such a great come job here, Kayla. putting together. Oh. Not going to ask you to play the ukulele. Yeah. This but thank amazing. You. you did a great job. These cocktails are fantastic. And hey, Kayla, take off your mask for half a second and just show people your smiling face. <laughs> Oh, I miss uh, those. <laughs> I yeah. I miss those. I miss Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Your cocktails are fantastic. People can come get cocktails from you as well. 2 p.m. is when you start. When do you end now? Um, 10 p.m. usually, Friday and Saturday. We're going till midnight. Look at that. Yeah. It's loosening up a little bit. Yeah. This, this is the creme de la creme. This is really, you've reached the mountaintop when you come here. Your knowledge base and, and how you've put together the head of this program, and you, you're such a great well, steward for not but, uh, only Colorado, but beyond, yes. I'm going to say, you know, Karen and I have been, uh, have organized this and built this, and yeah, I have a lot of knowledge, but I have an amazing team, both here and at the distillery, and it's really, you know, the fact that we've hired incredibly talented and creative people to work for us. Yeah. It's gotten us to where we are today. Yeah. And like Basically I said, Karen did it all. Is what especially Karen, saying. my lovely wife, who's <laughs> not here. Um, but like I said, you know, Thank we, you, Karen. This, this venue was just named bar of the year by Gin yeah. magazine a yeah. uh, week before last. And I see uh, the distillery was first runner up for distillery of the yeah. year. Uh, blown away by both accolades, and that's really a tribute to the, my, my teams, yeah. our teams, yeah. here and at the distillery. And yeah, come visit us. This is, this is the result of passion. This is what happens when you put passion together with people that just love what they do. Um, we have a great segment for you next. Stick around. You'll get a tour of the distillery. But in the meantime and in between time, I have to thank Kayla. Thank you again. Thank you. And yeah. Chef James Doxon for coming along with us. Thank you. Thanks Concept. for coming. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. the host with the most, Stephen Gould here. Thank you. And uh, Karen, thank you as well. have to thank uh, it's Minor Saloon. Minor Saloon, absolutely. Minor Saloon is our next-door neighbors. 
great beer selection, great wine selection, same menu we have for food, tasty. Both of us have, have patio space out in our alleys looking out of Lookout Mountain now during the day when the sun is shining, great place to hang out. Come see both of us. Yeah, absolutely. And for Jay Parker and myself, Greg Hollenbach, stick around for this next segment. We're going to teleport over to the distillery. You're going to love it. That's next. The Modern Eater Show continues. Hey, you guys. Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater and uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators. You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the Procard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120. There's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here in our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow! Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. I go home, I strip down to my skivvies. All right, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey everybody, Steve Gould from Golden Moon Distillery and Golden Moon Speakeasy. When I get my cocktails to go from Golden Moon Speakeasy, I go home, I kick back, and I watch The Modern Eater. <laughs> skivvies. Hey, I'm a Marine. It's skivvies, man. All right, back to the show in just a second, you guys. We're going to teleport over to Golden Moon uh, Distillery. We're at Golden Moon Speak right now. But I want to talk to you about something that I am passionate about. Steven is passionate about spirits. I'm passionate about bread. Can you see that? Can you see how, how passionate I am about bread, but not just any bread? Oh, no, 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 no. Aspen Baking Company. You guys, since 1994, Aspen Baking has been baking the freshest bread in the city. It's delicious. They're small business. They're local. Uh, they just got picked up by Snarfs. Snarfs is using Aspen Baking. Go to AspenBaking.com. Uh, Chef Noah Siebenhaller in Colorado Springs at Beast and Brews. He uses AspenBaking.com for a lot of things, man. Bud Long Hot Chicken for their uh, spicy chicken sandwiches. Aspen Baking. AspenBaking.com. That's where you go to get this freshest bread in the city. And you're not going to get chemicals or artificial colorings or the dyes or any of that. And they're not going to freeze it on you. Aspen Baking doesn't freeze the bread. It's fresh. It's local. It's delicious. It's AspenBaking.com. Now we're going to teleport to uh, the distillery. You ready for that? Watch this. power of teleporting golden colorado here it is we're at the distillery golden moon distillery stephen gould man we're gonna do a little tour of the distillery absolutely hey everybody want to say hi real quick this is what i look like handsome man you Put don't the mask back on so come on let me show you my distillery award-winning distillery award-winning distillery we were just given sort of runner-up for distillery of the year by gin magazine we were named the Distillery of the Year in 2019 by the American Distilling Institute. We were named Top Distillery in Colorado by Westward in 2016. Again, last year, 2020. So, you know, pretty cool place. We do a lot of things and people love us. We love having you guys in. Please come visit us in person. Come on. This is top notch. Let's go. All right, heading in 
to the distillery. First off, um, your stills that you have, some of the history behind, we have oh, yeah. to look at this, right? So now. we started in this little space. These are all antique stills that, that, that we renovated, we got up and running. This still is from the 1930s, it's called a Deroy Simplex Alembic, uh, designed really for farmers, vintners, orchard owners to make distillate on their agricultural properties. It has no gaskets, so during the off season, it was designed to be able to just throw in the barn. Everything is sort of in a water channel. Um, very hard to find these old stills. We run it dirty deliberately because the more you clean these, the more the copper runs, uh, gets worn away. And uh, not a lot of these stills are left. This one was built in 1933. It says 1941, that's just a serial number. But here we are, you know, 90 years later, 88 years later, and it's still making beautiful brandy. If this thing could talk, right, Stephen? Oh, yeah. But what do you think it would say? If it could say something, what would the history of it be? What do you think it would say? I think it would say, ooh, look at all the cool booze I've made. Yeah. I mean, it makes beautiful brandy and... Legal and illegal, I'm sure. No, totally legal. Do <laughs> you think? I, no I, moonshiners I, on this that? This is how I know. I know because this is a French tax stamp. So, and we bought it from the family that originally owned it. They yeah. used it for four generations. And so this tax stamp has says a trail. it has a trail right back to the manufacturer in 1933 in Paris. So all legal, baby. This is a it's, it's the, the slang for this style of still is Black Forest still because it comes from that region of Germany. So it was made by Friedrich Kleinschmidt of Schengen. I restored this one. I found it over there in a small distillery and we use this to prototype all our, our liquors and liqueurs and all our single malts. We still use it to make product almost every day. As you can see, there's another one right next to it that's very similar. I actually own two more that are under restoration that we're going to be putting in as well, plus a whole bunch of other antique stills. And if full value is if you'd love to do what we're doing right now, you offer uh, tours as well. We absolutely offer tours and tastings. Please come visit us. Look so, at how unique this is. Talk about this beauty. You're really happy so about it. Two me. years ago, we expanded this site. We're over 10,000 square feet. 100,000 case capacity, and one of the key things is this silo. So this silo is capable of receiving truckloads of malt from the malt house down the street, Golden Malting. Mm -hmm. It allows us to run as fast and as hard as we want to, and other distilleries would need multiple silos to be able to run at the capacity that we put in here. This silo allows us, allows us just to keep going because as the silo gets low, we pick up the phone, we call the malt house, and the next day the truck shows up and refills it. Sturdy. So it's a great thing. So 56,000 pounds of malt, 1,600 bushels, so a truckload and a half. And then the malt comes this way. When we're running single malt. If that silo could talk, it'd say, I'm happy because you keep <laughs> my belly full. So malted barley comes in. It's inducted into the silo. It comes through this four roller mill. It goes into our 500 gallon lauder ton. So this is, a, this is what's called a half ton lauder ton. So this piece of the distillery is really a brew house. So we're gonna mash here. We're gonna take that material. We're gonna put it into our fermenters and we're gonna ferment it out. Then we're gonna take and put it into the big whiskey still, which is a 500 gallon Scottish style pot. When we're done with our next phase of expansion, there'll be two of those. I know we're going fast, but just let's go look, look this process. So for people that are just getting familiar with the process okay. of that, talk well, about, so from there to, that's a very important. So step. what happens is you take your grain, which is full of starch. You're going to put it into the lauder ton or a mash ton. And a lauder ton is just a mash ton where you can separate the solids from the liquids. So barley products are typically laudered. So beer, for example. Mm -hmm. We're going to use temperature variation to, to wake up and allow the enzymes that naturally occur in that grain to convert those starches into sugar. Then because we're laudering, we're pulling the solids out, we're taking that liquid, which is really now unfermented beer, distiller's beer because it doesn't have hops in it. We're going to put it into our fermenters and then we're going to add yeast and ferment it out. So this really creates a beer, if you will. Yeah. And that beer is about 7.5% alcohol by volume. We're then going to put it into the big is, still. And is that where it takes the left-hand turn? Right. So we're going to put it into the big still, and we're going to distill it, and it becomes low wine. So they're 21 to 24% alcohol. It's not whiskey yet. It's mm. not spirit yet. Mm. It's low wine. So then 
we're going to pump it into this still over here. So this is our H3 room. So we store... H3, what does it mean? H3 is basically a fire, a fire suppression room. Okay. So we store lots of spirit in here, but at the same time we have our spirit still in here. And when we're done with the next phase, we'll have a couple of these. But this still we use both for gin and liqueurs, but we use as our spirit still for our whiskey. So when we take what was still, uh, distilled on the big whiskey still, it comes out 21 to 24% alcohol by volume. We're then going to put it in here and we're going to redistill it a second time. It's going to come out about 82% alcohol by volume, mm -hmm. so pretty hot. Then we're going to do one of two things. We're going to turn around and we're going to deproof it a little bit to get it down to cast strength and put it in a barrel to age. Or for our triple Irish style single malt, we're going to run it through this still a second time. So that's three passes. Clean it up even more and then we're going to put it in cask and age it out. What spirit can it be at that point in time? Has it been born as a spirit in its... In, in the United States, what comes off of this still is legally whiskey. Gotcha. It's not legally a single malt or a bourbon or a rye or okay. et cetera yet. It's a whiskey. It has to touch new oak and have certain criteria to, admit to be called one of those designated types of whiskey. So bourbon has to be 51% or more corn. Rye, 51% or more rye. Malt, 51% or, or more malted barley. In our case, the bulk of what we do here at Golden Moon that we distill ourselves is 100% malted barley, single malt. And so a single malt, which is a trade definition, not a legal definition currently, mm -hmm. means that you're taking from grain all the way through to the bottle to glass in one distillery. So it is inducted, mashed, which is that first vessel, fermented, which are these second group of vessels, distilled, which are these two stills, cast conditioned, which means they're put in the barrel, all in one facility. To and be a, a single malt. And another term, what would it be within state lines? Is, there, is bond a bottle? Is that something? So that bond a bottle means it's done within a single bond, bonded facility, which this distillery is, uh -huh. but it has to stay in that facility for four years. Interesting. Interesting. Straight means that it has been in a barrel for two years, but it can be a blend of multiple whiskeys as long as from within the same state borders. Yeah. So I thought it had to be regional ingredients as well. Does not. Does not. Does not. So, next thing I want to show you, come on here. But one of the things I want to say to you is what's remarkable about what you do, and, and just your knowledge base is fantastic, but you have a wide array of spirits that you construct. We have over 20 different spirits here, and then I work as Master Distiller part-time in Ireland for a large Irish operation, and so we make a variety of prototypes for the Irish here as well. And let me show you that. I love it. Again, Golden Moon Distillery, Stephen Gould here with us today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed So, it. now there's this vessel. So this vessel is a mash tun. Unlike the bigger vessel over there, this one has no provision for separating the solids from the liquid. And that's because we're putting multiple grains in here. And grains like corn, wheat, and rye, because they have to be heated to a much higher temperature to get to, get to gelatinize, you, it's very inefficient to separate the solids out. So you want to ferment and distill on the grain. So we use this vessel for multi-grain whiskeys. We then ferment them out and do the exact same process. And that's why if you look at the big stills, all of my big stills have much larger sumps on the bottom mm -hmm. because I'm moving a lot of solids out of them, especially when we're prototyping unique mash bills for other distilleries like my Irish clients. Let me get a picture of you by here. Yeah. Whoo, come down, get yourself a tour sometime. Show us what's next. What's next, let's go this way. So as you saw, I kind of have a penchant, if you will, for antique stills. So we're in the process of setting this up, but when I'm done, we'll have a row of antique stills that are all plugged in and working here to make unique products. You can see that's still there. That's Tiny Pot. That doesn't work. Tiny Pot will work. It will work again soon. It's a <laughs> French design. It was built in 1882 in yeah. Luxembourg. And we're going to be producing single malt on that still within the next 12 months. So, uh, and then these two. What stills, region of the world would make some of the best? French just comes up often. French, German. It's what you find historically with distillation technology, yeah. 
is in the 17 and 1800s, France was sort of the center of the distilling world. Uh -huh. In the 1900s, Germany sort of became the, the center of the distilling world. America was doing other things. There was a lot of innovation going on. Late 1800s through about 1880 in the US as well. Um, and everything sort of mashed together and crossbred. So, you know, a lot of these single stills you find that are coming out of Europe were more sophisticated at the time than what was being used uh -huh. here in the US. But that's a really difficult statement to state. So, for example, this one in the, 18, in the 1880s was a very solid design for its time as a pot still. But at the same time here in the US, you had mass, mass scale production being done on what are called three chamber stills like Todd Leopold has over Leopold Brothers. Yeah. And that it was a style of still that makes beautiful whiskey that just really isn't used a lot anymore for a lot of reasons. And it's so cool that Todd's brought that back up. I love it. So, you know, technology sort of floats around the world, et cetera. For sure. But if you look over here, now, so these two hybrid stills came out of Germany. Um, and you shipped these from Germany? I shipped these from Germany, correct. Yeah. So do you get a tracking number on that? I do get a tracking number on that. <laughs> you do? So we're, we're going to renovate these stills, and this is going to become our rum line. How do you find, just, I'm, I'm a, a curious kid, how do you find stuff like this? Is there a trade no, place or a Facebook I, group or kinda, a Craigslist Germany? You know, it's sort of like finding vintage motorcycles, something else I've been uh -huh. known to do. You sort of learn how to, ha how to scour the countryside yeah. and um, fantastic. build a network. Sorry to derail. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the stuff so I So these two stills I want to start using to make rum. We've got a relationship with a sugar factory down in Louisiana. And the rum is solely going to be used because we throw off a lot of barrels here. Yeah. I want to start filling those barrels with something so we can reuse that cooperage as many times as possible. And I don't know what we'll ever do with the rum. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to be in the, in the large scale rum business but we'll figure something out. I know we're going to sell. Local rum is really interesting because a lot of people bring it in and put it in their own bottles. They well, don't. we're not going to do that. I know you're not. And you never well, and, but I got to tell you, we've got companies like, like, uh, like Karen up at, up at Montana. She makes beautiful product. Yeah. I don't know if I want to compete with Karen. I mean, she's got a rocking business uh, going up there. I think you'd do pretty good. Too. So, and we're good friends and I love what she does. You know, so anyway, so we're going to use those two for rum. Can't wait. These other two Black Forest style of stills, we're going to bring up. This one's small enough, it'll probably be used just for training. Mm -hmm. This one we'll probably use for liqueurs, mm -hmm. just like we do with some of the other ones. Um, and just so you can see, we've got a fair amount of antique these stills. These are like having old Mustangs in your there's, garage. There's actually another antique still right behind this pile of barrels. Wow. Uh, again, all I of these other I think you have a, a problem. Oh. I think you like to buy these. I, I have another half a dozen in storage in Kentucky at, at a coppersmith down there called Vendome Copper and Brass. Do you really? I do, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm pretty bad. I've, I, I've been known occasionally to hunt for stills for other people. Yeah. Um, a couple of stills I pulled out of Germany are operating in Israel now. Uh, there's one operating in Australia. There's one operating in Hong Kong. So, you know, I get around the world pretty, he pretty stills, heavily. And I collect nothing. Or <laughs> Football cards. I collect stills. I collect <laughs> old books on distillation. I collect old motorcycles. I don't really collect. I can, they come and go. Uh, they come and go. They What's come next? And go. So let's go back here real quick, and then we'll, we need to head over and have a cocktail. Oh, we already did that. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we already did that, Stephen. So this is, this is our boiler. Ooh. So, you know, distillers get really excited about things that normal people don't. So we have this great big boiler. When, when we get this distillery to where I want it to be, there'll be a lot more stills in here than there are today. And we'll have 15 production stills running when I'm done with this, where we have five production stills today. This, this boiler is large enough we'll be able to run everything at once. Not that we ever would, but we could. Wow. So really proud of that. The other thing we're really proud of, come over here. I hope you got a good long-term lease. So floor drains. <laughs> I know, it sounds silly. These floor drains are awesome. Every brewer, every distiller, every winemaker that is watching this show will have floor drain envy because I can drive a forklift over this. We can take, if we had a fire incident here, we could run the sprinklers for 30 minutes and not a drop of liquid would go out of the building. They'd all go down these massive drains. Unbelievable. So a really amazingly safe distillery. These make running this distillery very easy, very clean. It's easy to clean up. Um, I know it's the weird things that that distillers geek out on. But yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my floor drains. What can I say? Unbelievable. So 
you were truly, truly born to do this. This is some of our barrel storage in our bottling area. Currently, one of the, one of the things we're going to be doing next yeah. when we grow this distillery is this whole area is going to become a medium speed, semi-automated bottling line. But for right now, we're still bottling by hand. I can see it right now. It's like, okay, put the label on. Make sure, do you that's label exact, right? That's what that table's <laughs> for. We <laughs> literally sit here and, and right. put labels on bottles. You yeah, who wants to come work for a bottle today? You know, um, no, we don't do that. You don't do that? We don't do that. Okay. You know, we have staff. We've been able, we've been blessed that we've been able to keep our staff oh, gainfully employed fantastic. throughout COVID. We, have, we, we only lost one employee and she actually transitioned to another industry. Yeah. And we ended up getting a replacement for her. So we've been really, really blessed that we've been able to largely keep our team intact That's great. throughout the last year. Yeah. Which is very cool. Put the label on straight, please. So. Make it look good. So that's Golden Moon. Um, that's we're actually in the middle of, of, of building a new small visitor center. It's kind of ugly in here right now, but. Oh, really? I really like the quaintness of the, ooh. When we're done, yeah. there'll be a little bar here. Uh, there'll be retail space. Uh, we'll be able to be able to do classes in here cool. as well. Thanks for the sneak peek. Yeah, so it's just, it's, we're, we're, we're just, we're probably a month away from opening this room. That's what you get on the Modern Eater Show. So, yeah. Previews and the best of the best. Stephen Gould, Golden Moon Distillery. Thanks for showing us around the speakeasy. Those cocktails were delicious. My pleasure. You bet. Award-winning, Golden Colorado's finest. It's Golden Moon Distillery, Stephen Gould. I love you, man. I learned so oh, much. Hey, I appreciate you coming out. Love hanging out with you guys. Everybody, please... Come visit. If you can't visit us, visit your neighborhood distillery, visit your neighborhood brewery, visit your, your local Colorado food, food venues, your restaurants, your food trucks. You know, everybody's still struggling through COVID, and the more you show love to Colorado business, the better. And that's it for a Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in today. It's a perfect day in Golden, Colorado. Do what Steven says. Go out and support local. So fantastic. We'll see you back here Friday, 2 p.m., the Modern Eater Show. Yes! continues <laughs> i love the laugh <laughs> like right now yeah <laughs> hey everybody it's kyle mindenhall i'm talking with uh, my good friends from the modern eaters show keep supporting them there's a lot of good stuff happening We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time and you're watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that.